going to the last round of today's round robin to determine who is going to be going to the finals match. First, taking a look at Skyborne Ranger ship number one. I'm sorry, Triple L ship number one, the GFA Dositicus is a Stormbreaker with a Lumberjack, uh, Lumberjack Tempest, Dual Tempest on the left side, Mine Launcher facing right. Their ally is the Poodle Moth, Watch a Goldfish with a Light Carronade and Gatling Gun. Their opponents, the Skyborn Rangers, we have a Shrike with Dual Gatling Watches. And their ally, the Big Borner, Junker with Dual Tempest on the left, Gatling on the front, Mine Launcher, Banshee, on the right side so the way this is going to work lecky lepidopter if lefty lecky lepidopter get two kills they are guaranteed the first seed spot in the finals because uh, they won their game against fcd five to one and skyborne rangers lost fcd one to five so if lecky lepidopter all they need is two kills so if that happens they get the first spot And then uh, if Skyborne Rangers go on to win this game, Skyborne Rangers and FCD will play another game for the second place spot to round out uh, the finals. And if uh, if Skyborne Rangers do not win, it will be FCD versus Triple L. Now, Schrichter moving in, moving in from the windmill. Lumberjack going to be a big problem. The Syndicus only ship that really has any balloon disable. Uh, and that's going to be a big problem for the Junker. Uh, I think Junker... Uh, the Junker... The, the pick of the Junker here for Skyborne Rangers is a little bit questionable. Considering uh, Triple L has decided to bring Stormbreaker and Goldfish. Two ships that are pretty fast. So... Big Borner is going to be relying on the Dual Tempest just to do the bulk of their damage, which is going to be difficult to do when they're fighting a Lumberjack. The Cytikus is just going to have more long-range firepower than their opponents. And so in a straight-up fight, I think the Cytikus is just going to win. Now, we'll see what their allies decide to do. Both Schrichter... Looks like currently Schrichter is on the offensive with Poodle Moth trying to protect their Stormbreaker ally. The Huacha forcing Schrichter away causing most of their Watcher Barrage to miss, so the Cytikus, uh looks like one gun, only the Mine Launcher going down, so they still have their full firepower, focusing the Junker while Poodle Moth moves in on the Blue Shrike, turning for light Carinade shots. And I think Shrichter might be losing their Balloon as well, being forced to Moonshine away, nine stacks of fire. And the Cytikus, no, seeing that the Shrike has been damaged, Look like they're focusing Schrichter for a moment, but now switching back to the Junker. As long as the Slumberjack is pointing towards the Big Borner, Blue Junker not going to be able to close the distance at all. You see, they move in, already lost their balloon, and then they reverse away to try to maintain those Tempest gun arms. I just, I don't know if Borner is going to be able to do enough damage to really affect this match. This open air fight is just not going to work out for them. Balloon down again. <laughs> so, Lumberjack going to keep them suppressed, but it may, well, it may take a while for Desidicus to actually get a kill. Those Tempests take a while, and the ship the high, high armor, well, let's say high armor ship like Junker, going to take a while for armor good to go down, but the Lumberjack was able to finish it off with the Flechet damage, and those Tempests already 60% health gone from the Big Borner. Uh, so they have to be very careful. Next armor break... Could be enough to finish them off. And they're already, they're running for the next terrain piece as Schrichter moves in to try to do something to give their ally a little bit of breathing room, but they're just having, <laughs> they're not able to really to do anything. Poodle Moth is doing a great job contesting them. Goldfish can work as a, a, gr a pretty good anti-Shrike ship because it does have that forward-facing Huacha where the Shrike actually has to move in with their broadside. A Poodle Moth uh, the goldfish can, can hit them while they are trying to move into that broadside position, which is why it serves as an effective counter. Now, currently, Desidicus is focusing the Schrichter, so Junker... It, no, I was going to say Junker has a window to move in, but Desidicus already switched back to the Big Borner. Balloon down yet again. And 
probably going to fit force Borner to move back into cover. Uh, you know what I was saying earlier about Junker having high armor? If they if they start hitting the ground, that armor is going to melt away. So anytime they start getting too low, they really are forced to move behind terrain. However, in this case, it looks like Junker's trying to uh, get a position underneath the city. Because maybe they're going to hop up and use the close range guns. I'm looking here. Do have... Hydrogen does the pilot of the big borner, so we'll see if they pump Hydra here. Maybe try to get that mine launcher side into effect. Because I think that's probably the only way they're going to be winning this game. And here we go. Big borner almost getting an arc. We do see one mine popping out, but the balloon goes down yet again, so they're going to drop to the floor. I'll maybe see a little more hydrogen. Not sure. They're maintaining this low position underneath Red's encampment. Now switching to the goldfish, it looks like. The Junker, while well, Schrichter, maybe Junker Big Borner can do enough uh, damage to distract the goldfish? No, I'm unsure. They're switching the close range side. Junker seeming a little indecisive with what they want to do. But we do see, okay, Gatling hitting the Poodle Moth. Now, if Junker can force the Poodle Moth to disengage, that gives Schrichter a window to move in on the Psittacus. But currently, the Poodle Moth is just ignoring the Borner. I don't think this Tempest side from the, judge, from the Junker is going to do it. And Big Borner going down. First point on the board for Triple L. One more kill will guarantee Triple L a spot in the finals. You know they want it. Trichter lost their balloon. If they hit the ground, they might not be able to escape here. And oh no, bad turn. The terrain knocks them back, and that's it. Triple L guaranteed the first seed in the finals match today. They will be going into the finals. Not, not only will they, they be playing in the finals, but they will have that one game advantage in the best of three as per the format that that, that SCS is played. So at this point... Skyborne Rangers, if they don't take this game, if they don't get five points in a row, I guess they don't, they don't need... They could give up two more ships, I suppose. But if uh, Skyborne Rangers need to win this game just to be in contention for that second final spot, means the pressure is on. Big Borner and Schrichter have spawned back in. Bots going up down on red. Schrichter's position very far south. These uh, split spawns from Skyborne Rangers, so the strike position not known to their opponents. And this could give them the opportunity to do something sneaky. Oh, Gatling fires. Not sure about that. I won I wonder if that was intentional, if maybe they're trying to bait Red Team away from the junker. Uh, to get, give Borner, I don't know, more time to move in. I don't see any AI on that ship. Uh, however, Big Borner is spotted, so they're already taking balloon damage. Richter moving in low. Big Borner's balloon going to go down pretty quick here. If any of those lumberjack shots hit, there's one. They're already moving to terrain. Tempest set the balloon on fire, so balloon's going to be going down on the big board. Nope. Actually stays up, just barely. Never mind. Trichter's moving in. Hydrogen, let's look at something a little more exciting. What's this watcher gonna do? They're gonna miss the entire volley because Poodle Moth forces them away and throws off the shot with Trichter trying to switch to their close range side. Looks like Watcher is still up, but Trichter is taking permanent damage from the Decidicus, losing their armor and the balloon. Well, the Big Borner, Tempest hitting the Decidicus as well. 15 stacks of fire. Stormbreaker are going to be losing their armor, so if uh, Stormbre if the Tempest shots continue that Stormbreaker, Blue Team could get a kill, a little bit of permanent damage. Balloon's on fire as well. Stormbreaker, a lot of damage, 70% health, melted away. They have to be a little bit more careful, because that is the one advantage Junker does have over the Stormbreaker. Oh, Shrike is dead, by the way. Rip. Uh, Stormbreaker has a lot less health. So, in this, even though Junker has less firepower in a situation where the Lumberjack is preoccupied on another target for a little bit, 
if Big Borner gets an op the opportunity to kind of melt away the, the Dositicus's armor with the Dual Tempest, they can, can take the Stormbreaker out. However, they did, for that 70% damage, they traded away a full ship, their Shrake. Which is a pretty rough trade when they're already down two points. This is going to be a tough game to win. Drifter. Bond in. Looks like target. Pudamoth already moving in to intercept them. Epic shots from the Decidicus targeting Shrichter. Big Borner about to pop out of cover. Might see Blue Team go for a dual focus, knowing that the Dositicus is in third stage of damage. Can't actually see any of the Tempest shots because it's loud. But I'm going to assume Borner is trying to shoot past the Goldfish and hit Red Stormbreaker. And Trichter lying in wait. They're ready to Hydrogen up, pick a target. Looks like first target going to be the Goldfish, and then they might hit Stormbreaker with the right side of Wancha. We'll see. They're, they're having a lot of trouble dealing with the goldfish. Now, Pudamoth does lose their armor, Shrichter. Switching to right side, we'll see who they decide to target. Moving in, might just be moving into cover, not sure. A little too low to hit Stormbreaker. While the Big Borner has almost closed the distance, if they can keep their balloon up, the Lumberjack shot misses. Each one of those Lumberjack shots that miss give the Junker an opportunity to get in close range, and Gatling currently targeting the Pudamoth. Borner's balloon taking big damage. Their window, another Lumberjack shot misses, but down goes the balloon, and Goldfish just reverses away. Even Borner, they had their balloon, they had the opportunity, but the Goldfish was just too fast for Borner to keep up and get their left broadside into effect. So Banshee Mine Launcher side on this Junker, so far in this game, totally useless. They just can't get into position. The enemies are too fast. Now we have dual focus from blue, two Gatlings hitting the Poodle Moth, no follow-up explosive damage, mine comes out, but it's a little bit short. Poodle Moth forces the Shrichter away, Big Borner moving in, Goldfish has to be careful, they're keeping the Shrike, well, Junker's dead. Did they hit a mine? I'm not even, was that just Tempest damage? Because that's... That's rough. Triple L match point. This may be it. Skyborn Ranger is about to be knocked out of the tournament. Richter's balloon down to the Lumberjack. I think this might be it. They have two engines down. They're trying to moonshine away, but their mobility severely limited. Junker spawns in close. Goldfish bumping them down, which actually works to their advantage which because they drop out of the Goldfish's gun arcs and are conveniently positioned behind this piece of terrain, so maybe they get a little bit of cut now. They're actually not, not quite zoning out the Stormbreaker shot, so we still have Lumberjack reigning in, Stormbreaker rotating around, so there's no safe place. Goldfish moving in for the ram, missing, but I don't know if it's going to matter. Hwaja hits them, takes them out, and Triple L with a 5-0 victory over Skyborne Rangers. Means that our finals match today going to be Fancy Cloud Dancers versus Triple L. Skyborn Rangers trying out some new ships that, uh, at least today, not quite working out for them.